Hello everyone! Part of my New Year's resolutions this year was to think of more creative ways to uh, communicate my experiences here in Almaty, Kazakhstan. And I'm really excited because I've never really done this before. But I think with the help of my experience of watching YouTube for five or so years, um, I'm really excited to start vlogging. So it's basically going to be a blog post, but through the medium of video. Um, and I'll hopefully be going around Almaty, showing you places. So yeah, this is the first time I've really tried it out. Um, so yeah, let's see how this goes. Today, I'm going to go around Almaty, find some of my favorite places, and just kind of film a little bit and show you around town. So let's go! So I headed out early in the afternoon with the beautiful sun shining and the beautiful spring weather. This is where I live here in Almaty. It's a Soviet concrete jungle with really bad graffiti, but the architecture and graffiti are misleading. The flats inside are actually pretty nice, at least in this neighborhood. Right across the street is Gandhi Park, which has a statue of, well, Gandhi. Uh, pretty straightforward. It's great to have a park that's a decent size, only like five minutes away from the apartment. Sometimes I come here when I'm frustrated or stuck with homework or if I'm feeling down. The thing about Almaty is that anything goes, really. You could spot almost anything. A donkey in the park, for instance, walking parallel to modern car traffic. Nothing and everything makes sense here. It depends on your perspective, but don't worry, I'll get into this later. Next, we are taking a trip on the metro, woo! It's super clean since it's only a few years old, but not many locals use it. There's only one line with about seven stops, and as someone who has visited St. Petersburg and Moscow, it's easy to draw a parallel in the design of the stations. First stop, Zhebek Zholi. This part of Almaty is considered to be the heart of the city. There's a farmer's and artisan's market almost every weekend, although its schedule heavily depends on weather. You can find all sorts of crafts here, woodworkings, knitted clothing, paintings, and of course, Kazakh-inspired jewelry. Only a few blocks away is Panfilov Park. This is perhaps the most photogenic spot in the city, at least in my opinion. It's usually filled with lush greenery, but you know, winter happened. The park is famous for the Orthodox Church Ascension Cathedral. Anyone who knows me well knows that I have a thing for churches. Even though I wouldn't consider myself a particularly religious person, I still find something beautiful about churches and other houses of worship. Fun fact, it is made entirely out of wood. Orthodox churches are known for their colorful exteriors, as well as the heavily decorated interiors. Something I first observed in Russia was that the Orthodox tradition is old, and that might sound really stupid, but hang in there with me on this. When you are in an Orthodox cathedral, you feel like you are catapulted back into the 11th century or something. It looks like nothing has really changed, which is odd, because 21st century Russian society changed a lot. The 20th century brought a lot of turmoil, which was often violent, but today the Orthodox community still has a stronghold in the Russian ethnic community. But there is nothing quite as bizarre as the juxtaposition of an Orthodox cathedral and a Soviet war memorial resting inside a park which is named for the Panfilov heroes, the 28 soldiers of an Almaty infantry unit who died fighting off Nazi tanks in a village outside Moscow in 1941. They are commemorated by this monument, which depicts 15 soldiers from all 15 Soviet republics bursting out of a map of the USSR, ready to struggle for the motherland. It's a classic Soviet memorial, but oh my god, wait, is that a wedding? Ugh, weddings. Well, remember what I said earlier about Almaty being a city of odd contradictions? Well, this is a good example. An Orthodox church, a Soviet war memorial commemorating the dead, and a wedding party taking photographs in front of the eternal flame. Because nothing says wedding like standing in front of blocks of black marble listing the biggest and deadliest battles of World War II. I've been to the memorial a few times, and each time it's had a very sobering and very solemn effect on me. But today was very different. To me, it's a very reflective place, 
But then you turn your head and then there are ten women wearing evening gowns and four inch stiletto heels smiling and laughing. The sight of a serious war memorial being bombarded with happiness and joy is odd, but in a way it's also very welcoming. And in some ways, so much has changed and yet a stone cold memorial will continue to stand regardless of the city's evolution. I wanted to visit another Soviet war memorial. As you can probably guess, there's a bunch of them. This is Aliyah and Manchuk, the two female Soviet snipers who served in the Second World War. They were both born in the Kazakh Soviet Republic and were orphaned at a very early age. While not much is known about Manchuk, Aliyah ended up in Leningrad with her uncle, who was an officer posted in the city. When war broke out, Aliyah enlisted with her friends and trained as a sniper for the Red Army. In January 1944, her brigade ambushed Nazi troops in a town just outside of Moscow. Legend then says that she shouted, Bratia, soldati, zamnoi, and the whole battalion jumped into the Nazi trenches. Although both women died from wounds obtained during combat, they were later awarded the Hero of the Soviet Union as well as the Order of Lenin, the highest of Soviet military decorations. I tell this story only because it is rare for female soldiers to be so highly visible in a nation's narrative. It makes me think about how few monuments we, as Americans, have dedicated to our own women who have sacrificed so much for the American cause throughout history. Across the road from Aliyah and Manchuk's memorial is the British Kazakh Technical University. It boasts a strong Soviet facade, and this picture just reminds me of the wide roads and scenes from Moscow, albeit with far less honking and car traffic. Another cool thing about Almaty is its architecture. In the historically old part of the city, you can find your classic Soviet building next to a Kazakh Baroque style facade, followed by a completely modern looking thing, which then you have to ask yourself, wait, what, what is that? <laughs> this theater, named in honor of Kazakh writer Mukhtar Ayuzov, boasts a very modern style, which makes sense since Ayuzov was a popular writer during the Soviet Union. He was also a playwright, and his work often addressed topics like Kazakh nationalism within a socialist country. He is a heavily revered figure within Kazakhstan, and as consequence, there are many buildings, institutions, and streets named after him. Like all writers, Ayuzov drew inspiration from the literary legends who preceded him. He wrote an entire epic about a bai, another great son and poet of Kazakhstan. Abai is a beloved figure in Kazakhstan, and therefore also has a lot of things named after him. He even has a city named after him. This is his theater in Almaty. You can see that it's a bit different compared to Ayuzov's. With echoes of European Baroque, you can still see that there are variations, with some traditional Kazakh patterns on the decoration, and... Oh dear god, is that another wedding? Oh, you know why? Ugh, it's Valentine's Day. Which led me to another park to wallow in my misery. So, this is the first time I've been able to find an open bench in kind of a not busy area. Every bench has had a couple on it, like doing something remotely, remotely? something intimate. only means one thing. Burger King! No judging. So it's the end of the day, but what of it? I've spent nearly five months here, and the city continues to surprise me daily. When I first arrived, not many things made sense. Almaty feels like a city that was cobbled together by a bunch of different people, which as it turns out is exactly what happened. Almaty is a incredibly diverse city, and I've talked about this before in some of my earlier blog posts. The city is home to so many different groups, religious and ethnic, so it's not surprising that the city reflects a different attitude and style every other block. But you also have another kind of heritage that influences the city. Western European Baroque with a hint of traditional Kazakh versus a strong iron Soviet socialism. Maybe in times past, these factions were competing against each other. But now, it just seems that you are able to see this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and also this, and this, and this, and it's all completely normal. Some say it's a city of ironic contradictions, and I know I said that earlier. But as a budding linguist, I can tell you that the root of that word is contra, meaning against. 
But I think I take issue with this, because are these ironic sites really competing against each other? Sure, maybe historically the Soviet monuments and Orthodox Church displayed a conflict. The rest of these things just display a multicultural society, or a salad bowl, as it's known, with diverse groups living side by side. This isn't a bad thing, so while Almaty doesn't have Red Square or the Hermitage, it has this fascinating juxtaposition of history and culture, and I think that's more than a world traveler could possibly ask for. So thanks for watching, and until next time, enjoy the snow, America. Not jealous of you. <laughs>